I heard a rumor about this issue a while back and I finally got to test it last weekend when I went away camping for a few days and it's to do with Red Arc DC DC charger This is my 1225D. So some of you might be aware already that I've got the 1250D inside my vehicle. It belongs to me mate. He is going to take it back next week. I did have an option to purchase it and I thought it'd be brilliant because as you're aware I now got the power pole Mercury 330 amp hour in my vehicle <clears throat> so for me it's very critical that I've got a DC DC charger that will charge minimum at least minimum 50 amps back into my battery per hour because I don't tend to carry a solar panel with me anymore and in fact even the generator I found I've not had to use so I rely on the high capacity of the battery and the DC DC as I'm driving along to charge my battery. Now the 1225D when you've got a 330 amp hour battery it's not going to do it really because you're probably only going to charge at about average 20 amps per hour. Even with the 1250D it only charges average between 35 to 45. I find after an hour or so, so even after a half an hour, it seems to drop down to 35. But as far as I'm aware, what I'm about to explain to you now is only an issue with the 1250D. I don't believe it's an issue with the 1225D although I'm probably going to have a chance to test that out because the 1250D is going to come out of my vehicle and for now I'm going to replace it with the 1225D or I might look at a couple of the Victron DC DC chargers the trouble is the Victron ones they're only 30 amps but you can purchase more than one and piggyback them together. I'm not sure how you do that, how you wire that up. I've never looked into it. But apparently it's something you can do. But it's at a big cost. And not something I can afford at this stage. So I'm actually really seriously considering going for the Renergy DC-DC. It's because of the cost. I checked last night and currently you can purchase the Renergy 50 amp DC DC charger it's got a lot of features I'm amazed how many features that this unit has got it just blows the red arc out of the water in regards to features for $333 delivered to my door and it charges at 50 amps so I'm seriously for the price I'm going to consider that one especially if I've got the room that's the main disadvantage for me, is I possibly may not have the room. I haven't checked yet, so after I finish this filming, I'm going to grab my tape measure and check to see if it fits. If it does, I'm probably going to place an order for it straight away. Why, you might be asking. I'm sure a lot of you are asking, why am I not going to continue or choose to purchase the 1250D. The reason being, and I'm sure most of you are not aware of this, it's something that was brought to my attention a while back by one other YouTube channel. And it's the only time I've ever seen this issue mentioned on any YouTube channels out there. You have to really look in the fine print to find out 
anywhere else on any website. It's got this strange feature in the 1250Ds where it only charges for max two hours. That's it, two hours. At max two hours. Once that two hour period is up, that's it. It won't charge anymore. Don't think you can pull up the side of the road, turn your car off, turn it back on, and it'll start again. I've got no idea what's going on there, but it will not charge. So, very strange. Now, there was mention of this, as I mentioned, in a video some time ago. And I thought, this is interesting. I'd like to test this theory. Well, I've never had a chance to test it because I've only been running a 100 amp hour lithium battery. But now that I've got the PowerPoll Mercury, which is a 330 amp hour capacity, last weekend I went away camping for three days. And I used my induction cooktop and I also used a air fryer and a coffee machine as well and also run some 240 volts to charge a few various different appliances that I had. So I managed to get the battery down to about 55% state and then I had about three hour drive ahead of me. So I thought perfect I finally got a chance on the way driving home to see if what this guy that mentioned in the YouTube channel and sorry if you're watching I cannot remember the YouTube channel the channel that I watched it on I tried to find it and I couldn't find it <clears throat> but that doesn't matter that doesn't matter so I turned the car on exactly 9:38 a.m. battery on 55 percent sure enough exactly on the dot 11:38 a.m. My DC DC Red Arc 1250D stopped charging the battery. I couldn't believe it. Right on the dot. I went on to Red Arc's website and did a little bit of research in it. And there is a firmware upgrade that you can do that increases this, I believe, out to three and a half hour charge time. Which would have been a lot better than two hour charge time. But the firmware, you cannot perform the firmware yourself. You have to send the unit back to Red Arc at a cost approximately $100 to get the firmware upgraded. So it gives you an extra hour and a half of charging. So how bizarre. I, I got no idea I think I might have read somewhere it's got something to do with the heating that it just gets too hot so it has to shut down after two hours and I managed to stretch it out to three and a half hours which meant <clears throat> I drove due to a lot of traffic roadworks it took me about three and a half hours to drive back home and I was only able to get back 20% in my battery. I reckon if my Red Arc 1250D had it kept charging, I would have been close to 100% by the time I would have come home. So I've worked out in that two hour period, on average, I was only able to put in just under 80 amps back into the battery. And I went through approximately what would it be 150 amps so I had 150 amps I should have had to get back into the battery as I'm driving along I was only able to put back less than 80 amps it's probably about 75 amps 70 75 amps in two hours so I stopped pulled over had lunch maybe after a bit of a break it might come back to full charge but no, it did not. So I came back home, 
and I parked out the front and I unloaded the vehicle, gave the vehicle a bit of a clean. So this is about an hour later. So I started the car up to put it back into the garage and no, it still did not charge. So I was in the charge car, in the garage, <laughs> I should say. I came back about four or five hours later and I tried again and it still will not charge. Now, I don't know how long before it reset itself and it was able to charge. I didn't check the following day, but I checked yesterday and it was back up to charge. It was actually charging two days after. I don't know how long it takes before you're able to charge again. For me, it's useless, which is bizarre. For something that costs so much money, like the 1250D, the Red Art 1250D, go do your pricing and see how much it's worth. You might as well just stick, in my case, I might as well just stick to the 1225D, which is what I'm going to do. So within the next day or two, this will be going back in there. Quite possibly, if I got the room, a Renergy will be going in there. That'll charge to 50 amps. It's got no time factor. It's got Bluetooth connectivity as well. So it gives me all the information that I would need on my phone. You don't get any of that on the Red Arc. The Red Arc, yeah, they're good, I must admit. This 1225D is probably about six years old and I never had a problem. So, yeah, let me know. Anyone out there with the 1250D Red Arc, are you having the same problem as me? I'm pretty sure you are. Now, apparently, if you buy the newer ones now, go online and check. There's a certain serial number range above a certain serial number. <coughs> they include the updated firmware free of charge. So you've got to be careful. If you're in the market for 1250D, do your research and make sure that you get one of these latest ones that's got this firmware included in it. Because a lot of places around Australia are still selling the old stock that's got the old firmware for the same price as what you can purchase the latest stock with the newer firmware. But then if you go and buy one of these older stock items, and you've got a larger battery like I have, anything larger than 100 amp hours, you're going to need to send it away to get the firmware upgraded. But then that's only going to give you a max, if I recall reading, three and a half hours. That's it. It's only going to charge max three and a half hours. So don't think you'll be able to pull over the side of the road, have a break for half an hour, two hours, jump back in the car, start it up, and drive off and expect it to charge. It doesn't do it. I tried five, six hours later, and it still wouldn't charge. So, yeah, how bizarre, how weird. I don't, I don't understand it, I don't get it. I just think it's ridiculous spending that sort of money on a product and it's not performing really. The most it'll charge by the looks of it per day, the most you're gonna get out of a 1250D from the test that I've done per day, you'll be lucky to get 75 amps. Maximum charge out of a Red Arc 1250D per day. That's it. That's it guys, 75 amps per day. That's it. So for me, someone like me, with a 330 amp hour battery, that's going to mainly rely on DC-DC charging to keep that battery charged, it's a no-go. Absolutely useless. I wouldn't even pay $100 for it. It's just, I, I'd be better off I'll get more charge, if I'm driving most of the day somewhere, I'll get more charge out of this, the 1225D. I'm pretty sure 
this one doesn't have that limiting factor. So, something to be aware of. So, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please put a like. It helps with my algorithms. Now, I know a lot of you out there who are watching my channel are not subscribed to YouTube and quite often have asked, how can I help you out? Well, all you've got to do is just watch the videos, particularly the ads. If you don't fast skip the ads, then I will get a certain percentage from what the advertisers pay YouTube. And that's the best way, even if you subscribe to my channel, not only just putting a tick and even commenting down below, ask a question, helps with the algorithms with my channel and helps my channel to get more views. So if you do that, that'll be awesome. Guys, so till next time, look after yourself, be kind to everyone, and cheers.